Namaste yogis, my name is Pallavi um, and welcome to Yoga and You. Today we're going to do some yoga for back pain uh, which seems to be one of the biggest killers of our time. A lot of us have desk jobs, a lot of us spend a lot of hours of the day just sitting in one place. Sometimes our postures are not right. So one is for the spine, which is usually supposed to be super lengthened. There's a lot of compression that's happening in the spine. And because we're spending a lot of time in this one posture, there's also a lot of tension that builds up in the shoulder and the back. So today our main focus through the practice is going to be to lengthen the spine to stretch out the back muscles and also to release any of tension that's built up in the shoulder. So let's get started in Balasana or Child's Pose. So allow your knees to go as wide as a mat. We're going to take a nice comfortable Child's Pose. Allow your hips to rest on the heels and then walking your palms to the front of the mat. Staying in Balasana or Child's Pose. This is supposed to be a great pose to start in because our entire bodies are grounding down into the earth. All of our chakras are quite close to the earth and it's supposed to be a very calming pose to start in. So staying here for another four breath cycles. Three. Two. And for one from here, chin into the chest, hips off the heel, bring your back as much as possible, bringing your spine down, hips down, toes towards the head as you look up to the sky, roll the shoulders back and try to get your toes as close to the head as possible. For some of you it might be here, for some of you it might be much closer to the head. Staying here for a few seconds and then rolling back into Balasana. We're going to take three, four more of these. So just forming these ways for another five. Move at your own pace, stretching out every vertebrae of the back. Four, four. For three. Try to get your toes to come closer to the forehead. Almost like your toes want to touch the top of your head. Four, three. Remember to breathe into the entire capacity of your lungs. Opening the chest up to the sky. Four, two, last little one and for one. Stay here for a few seconds, bend the elbows a little bit and then push up to the ceiling. Try to get your toes as close to the heels as possible and then release the toes up. From here, slowly get the heels back and we're going to come back into Balasana and do some shoulder stretches. So from here, left palm goes to the right side of the mat, left ear comes down to the ceiling. Stay here for another five. Keep breathing, four, three. Two and one. Same thing on the opposite side. Left hand goes out. Right hand comes down to the ceiling. For three. For two. Try to walk the right palm as much as possible to the opposite side. And for one. Coming back to the center. We're going to draw one last wave to the front of the mat. Head up to the ceiling, relax the toes, curl the toes down. As you push your hips up, coming into your downward facing dog. Bringing the legs together, bicycling your legs here. Good. And then slowly walking the feet to the front of the mat. 
holding either elbow and just sway from side to side. Allow your feet to be hip width distance. Really feeling that stretch in the lower back. You notice your head moving a few centimeters towards the floor. What is important here is the weight lies in the toes and not in the heels. So push your weight forward into the toes almost like you can lift the heels if possible. And now holding the elbows and sway. For another three. Four, two. And four. One. Depending on how tight your hamstrings feel, level one, your two fingers, your index and your middle finger, go around the thumb and forward fold. Okay, this is level one. If your hamstrings are a lot more tight and you can go deeper into the pose, place the palms underneath the feet, almost like your toes are trying to touch your wrist. And forward fold into Padangushtasana. So wherever you are at, today my hamstrings are not as open. So I'm going to stay in level one. Stay here for another four. Three. Two. Try to get a little bit closer to the earth. And for one, release it out. Palms come down onto the floor. Bend your knees. Step, step back. Bringing your belly down. Placing your elbows on either side of the chest. And looking up to the ceiling. Into your sphinx pose. What we're doing with the spine now is that we're giving it a counter movement. Before we were forward folding and now we're compressing the lower back. We're basically moving it in opposite direction so that tension may be released from the back. Relax the shoulders, look up to the ceiling. Staying here for five breath cycles. Four, three. For two. Last little breath here and for one. From here I'm going to ask you to move a little further to the back of the mat and lie down onto the mat. Allow your hands to go onto either side of the body and now from here the right palm stays exactly where it is. Using the left palm, move your body to onto the right side. Your left foot will come behind your right knee, almost like a cycle stand. Relax your head. And with the left hand, draw a big semicircle, interlacing the hands behind you. If this is easy, bring the wrist to touch. If this is not easy, use a strap and hold the strap onto either side of the arms. Whether it's like this, like this, wherever you are, use a strap. Or if it's accessible, Interlace your fingers, squeezing the shoulder blades together so that any tension built in the shoulders is released out. Rest your head here. Staying here for another five breath cycles. Four, two. And for one release, slowly coming back onto your body. Hands go onto either side. Take a few seconds to recoil. To allow your body to recenter. And we're doing the same thing on the opposite side. So left hand stays exactly where it is. Using the right hand as a stand. The right foot comes behind the left knee. Interlace your hands. Relax the head down. If this is too much for your head to hold up, you can use a block or a pillow to rest your head. Or just let it hang. Squeeze. 
squeezing the shoulders together for another three. Four, two. Last little breath. And four, one. Coming back onto your body. If you'd like, you can turn onto your back. Coming into Shavasana for as long as you need. You can take 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, as long as you need. And whenever you are ready, you can gently move your fingertips and your toes. Curling on to one side. Coming into seated at your own pace. I hope your back feels stretched out. You can take a longer Shavasana if you need. And I hope you enjoyed your practice with me. Namaste.